So, good day everyone. So, welcome to Basic Physics Bridging Program Day 1. Ako dahil si Alan Gabila Ilariosa, a third year mechanical engineering student. So, before we go to sa tuwang ko, ano, lesson proper, I want to ask everyone, no, sa kanang nagtanaw diya karon. this question nga, nga no, nag-ME man ka. Unsay rason? Nga nung no, nag-ME mo ang gikuha? Nga no, sa tanan, engineering fields kay ME. And, Sa inyo hong pagunahon na anak ron, I want you to remember no, that reason. No, Kaya nga rason nga inyong nahunahunaan ka ron, either gamay man o dako. No, I want you to remember that pag kanang, uh, kanang mag, there are times nga mag, uh, mag lisod mo, nga mag struggle mo. No, I want you to go back to that reason and fight the challenge. No, Okay. To be honest, lisod yun ang ME and I hope nga ma-engineer na yun dan, no? Bohon. No? So, thank you. So, katong nga reason, keep it in your heart and always nga balikan na ito na pagka nang mag ta. No? So, pada yung engineering. So, for our first lecture for the day, our lessons will cover number one, distance and displacement. Number two, speed and velocity. Number three, acceleration. Number four, uniform acceleration in one dimension in both horizontal motion and free falling motion. So let's first talk about distance and displacement. Now, the distance and displacement are two words na usually gaka confuse, ga, gamit, no? And usually gaka interchange sila sa mga uh, problems. Na. And distance and displacement are. Closely similar words, but nagid sila distinction, no? Depende silang definition. So before we go that, we go to that. Atong describe how do we describe motion, no? So by definition, an object is in motion if its position changes in relation to some fixed object during a given time. So let's have for example, we have monkey at location A, and natay fixed object nato, which is the tree. Nganong fixed object man kay dili gud siya move since it is fixed to the ground. And then after some time, let's say for 2.5 seconds, nakita nato nga nag-change of position ni monkey from location A to location B. And so we can say that monkey was in motion because nag-change ang iyong position in relation to the tree given a, during ta uh, given a specific time, which is 2.5 seconds. So that is how we look at motion. Okay? So next is the frame of reference. So by definition, frame of reference is the viewpoint of the observer of motion. So it is used to specify precisely the location of objects. So let's say you are sitting right now at your chair, no? What sa kaninga lecture video. So in relation to the ground, in relative to the ground, you are moving at a rate of 0 kilometers per second. No? Wala mga naglio. You are at rest. But if we change our perspective and you are relative to the sun, no, naka sa earth and earth revolves around the sun at a rate of 30 kilometers per second. And siyempre, kung naka sa earth, you are also moving around the sun at the rate of 30 kilometers per second. So, atong nakita, no? Naglahi ta og frame of reference. Atong frame of reference sa uh, first example, kay ang ground, and you are moving relative to it by... 0 kilometers per second. But katong gilahi na nato ato ang frame of reference which is ang sun na karon. Now you are moving around 30 kilometers per second kay na maka sa earth and earth is moving at that rate. Okay? So nagets na nato ang motion and ang frame of reference. So now let's differentiate distance and displacement. So distance is the length of the path traveled by a body while moving from an initial position to a final position. So this means, uh, no, mo ni siya ang measure sa tanan giagihan sa isa ka object, gikan sa iyang sinugdanan padulong sa iyang destination. While ang displacement is the shortest distance between the initial position and the final position of the body. So sa simpler terms pa, mo ni itong ginatawag na shortcut ang displacement. No? So kung sa distance, Tanawan ni mo kung asa siya ni Agi and i-add ni mo ang total nga path 
ato, wala sa displacement, wala siya ipaki kung asa kani agi. Ang tanawan lang niya is ang change in position from initial to final, which is ang shortest distance pod, no? So let's say we have example here, no? From Cagayan de Oro to Iligan City. So by bus, kung mag mag bus ka, no? So ang imo ng gihan is ninety kilometers. And moagi pa kaog El Salvador, moagi pa kaog Lagindingan, and mga cities pa po dira sa in between sa Iligan City and Lagindingan. So the sum of all the lengths covered is more a more distance, which is a total of ninety kilometers. So sa mo na siya ang total sa tanan ni mo diagihan sa distance. While ang displacement is fifty kilometers. Let's say nag helicopter ka straight from Cagayan de Oro to Iligan City. And that length is only 50 kilometers. No? Why? So that is your difference between sa imuang initial position and final position. Okay? So wala siya ay pake sa imuang path. Ang iyahalang pake kay ang shortest distance or ang change sa imuang position. Okay? Gets ba? So we have another example here. Na ay cyclist. Nagtuyok siya sa park. And tanaw ni nato ang distance kanang red line is mo na yata nang giagihan, no? Taas taas po niyang giagihan, no? Ni tuyok yun siya. But ang iyang displacement lang, kay kung asa ay yahang ah yung position karon compared sa iyang initial position. So ang displacement mo ragyud iyahang let's say gina care about ang final and initial. Well, ang distance it it cares about sa imuhang giagihan po. Not only sa imuhang final and initial, but sa imuhang giagihan. Ang displacement, final and initial lang ang ginatanaw. Okay? So another difference from distance and displacement is distance is always positive and displacement can be positive or negative depending on the reference point. So let's say, for example, na ata aning directions na to or four main directions. We have north, south, west, and west and east. So let's say an object moves five meters to the right. So an distance na to is five meters, and our displacement is also five meters. They are both positive. So to the right or kanang ni move siya sa east. But another example we have distance. Ah, an object moves. Three meters to the south. Okay, our distance is three meters since distance is always positive, while our displacement is negative three meters. No, so ang displacement is nagdepend sa sa direction. Ang distance wala siya pa kaya kung sa left ba kasi sa right, forward, backward, north, south or west, it is always positive. Okay. Ang displacement, on the other hand, nag-care siya about kung asa ka nga direction or asa nga object niya, asa nga direction ng object ni ni Addo. Now, we have here, kung sa displacement, we have north and east, east, that is positive. But kung south and west, ang atong displacement and negative. No? Ang distant, doesn't matter kung asa ka maagi, it is always positive. But displacement, ga care siya about kung asa ka ni Agi. So north and east, again, positive. South and west, negative. So let's say another kuan, no? Ang distance na to is a scalar quantity. Well, ang displacement is a vector quantity. When we say a scalar quantity, it only has a magnitude. No? Ang iya ang measure lang. Kung displacement, It is a vector quantity, so meaning it has magnitude and direction. So na asay measure and na abut say direction kung asa sa badulong. So let's try to differentiate and see the difference sa distance and displacement in these ah sentences. So kung this kung distance, we have Thomas Shelby ran ten meters away from the cops. No distance measure lang so ten meters away from the cops. And displacement kung displacement po. We have Thomas Shelby ran 10 meters to the right away from the cops. So now I measure, which is the magnitude, which is 10 meters, and now put the direction, which is to the right. Another example: A military sniper shot an escaping terrorist from one one mile away. Okay, 
So, uh, to measure is one mile away and walay direction. And sa displacement na to, a military sniper shot an escaping terrorist from one, one mile away to the south of his direction. So, naatay measure, which is ang one mile or ang magnitude, and naapod tay direction, which is to the south. Last example, Sheka cut a chicken breast two inches deep, and we have a measure, which is two inches and no direction. But in displacement, Sheka cut a chicken breast two inches deep and 30 degrees from the center. So we have a measure, which is two inches and a direction, which is 30 degrees from the center. No, and in conclusion, distance and displacement can be equal and, display, and displacement can be less than but not more than the distance. As we can remember, no, displacement is the shortest distance. So it can't be more than the distance. No? So displacement is always, it can be lesser than distance and they can also be equal but not more than the distance. Okay? Gets ba? Okay, so we have here examples. So let's say a car travels along a straight road 100 meters east, then 50 meters west. Find distance and displacement of the car. Okay? So let's first try to find the distance. So at first, we move on car 100 meters to the east, then 50 meters to the west. So we, we are going to add katuong duha na to ka measurement and that is 100 plus 50 and that is 150 meters. Ang total distance nga gi-cover sa car. But sa atong displacement, so at initially, 100 meters to the east, so that is positive 100. And then 50 meters to the west, so that is negative 50. So if we're going to add 100 and negative 50, we have 100 minus 50 is equal to 50 meters to the east. So ang final position karun sa ato ang car, uh, relative sa ihang initial position is 50 meters to the east. Okay? So ni east man, so positive 100, and west, so negative 50. Okay? So ang distance na to is 150 meters, and our displacement is 50 meters to the east. So as we can see, Mas gamay ang ato ang displacement yun. Okay? So, a person, another example, a person walks 4 meters east, then walks 3 meters north. Determine the distance and displacement. So, let's try to find, uh, let's try to imagine, or where, as we can see in this figure, let's say 4 meters to the east, okay, from point A, then 3 meters to the north. Okay, so to find the distance, we are going to add the measures sa iyahang giagihan. So that would be 4 meters plus 3 meters. So 4 meters plus 3 meters is equal to 7 meters. And that would be the distance sa, iyaha, sa person nga iyang gilakaw. While ang displacement, as we can see, naka-form ta og right triangle. No, di ba ang displacement is ang uh, katong final position lang and initial position. Wala siya pakiisa gagihan. Okay? So, tanaw na to dire. So, dapat ang iyahang displacement kay ang length aning uh, from point A to point B lang. So, wala na siya pakiyaning 4 meters and 3 meters. And coincidentally, and luckily, ang kanang kuanday, kanang ato ang green nga arrow, is the hypotenuse of our right triangle. Okay? So, if we try to find the hypotenuse of our right triangle, we can use the Pythagorean theorem. So, we have the Pythagorean theorem is C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. Our A is 4 and our B is 3. So, we are going to substitute that to A and B. We have 4 squared plus 3 squared. 4 squared is equal to 16 plus 3 squared is equal to 9. So 16 plus 9 is 25. And we're going to take the root of 25 and we have 5 meters to the northeast. To the northeast because tanaw na to ang araw kung asa siya padulong. No? 
that is north, then that is the direction of east. So that would be northeast. So always, kung displacement na agad siya, direction nga, pakapi. Kung distance, katong measure lang, and displacement na ay 5 meters, nga measure, then na po yung northeast nga direction. So last example, we have a runner travels around the rectangle track with length 50 meters and width 20 meters. So he travels around the rectangle track two times, then stops at the starting point. Determine distance and displacement. So we are going to first find our distance. So ang saan na ito ang pagpangita sa distance ani ron? So tanaw na ito ang rectangle, ang runner, kini dagan daw siya sa rectangle track. And rectangle track, so pangita na ito ang perimeter sa rectangle track. And the perimeter of a rectangle is 2L plus 2W. And we are given with our length and width. So we're going to substitute that. No? That would be 2 times 50 plus 2 times 20. And that would total to 140 meters. And then ingon po, he travels around the rectangle track 2 times. So ang perimeter nato is 140 meters. Then ituyok siya kaduha. So ato ang total distance, I times 2 nato sa perimeter. And that would we will have a 280 meters nga distance no ni dagan ang runner for a total of 280 meters so our distance is 280 meters for our displacement no ni stop siya sa starting point so ang difference sa atong final position and initial position is zero wala siya nag move ang iyang displacement kay di ba final and initial position naman ng ato ang ginatanaw sa atong displacement. Pero inibalik man siya sa iyang initial position which is katong sa starting point. So meaning, our displacement is 0 meters. No? So we can see that displacement can be 0 kung nibalik ta sa ato ang initial nga position. Okay? So na if more funny kay nga uh, kung ano, story like for example, gipanganap ka sa isa ka sa uh, hospital, then after 80 years, nibalik ka dito sa so imong deathbed at the same hospital, ang imodong distance is katong imong gitravel from your pagpanganap, padulong ni tigulang ka, ni, ni teenager ka, ni tigulang ka, nag-asawa ka, nag ka, until 80 years old. Mote mo ang distance. Sa tanan mo gilakaw, gitravel ta na. Pero ang imong displacement is 0 meters kay nibalik mo ka sa imong initial nga position katong gipanganak ka. No? Gamay lang na siya ng ano, murag, uh, brain teaser mga naunaon. Pero kung naunaon ni mo, kung siya no? Murag, make sense po bitaw. Kaya na. Taas kay mo ang distance from 0 to 8 years old pero mo ang displacement is 0 kay is balik man ka sa imong initial position. Huh? So, that is all about distance and uh, displacement. So, let's move to speed and velocity. So, these two terms is usually gihapon nga aga confuse and kakagamit interchangeably. Do na, na sila uh, similarities, na put sila differences. So, let's try to define first speed. So speed is a scalar quantity. So as we know, a scalar quantity has only magnitude. And speed is also how fast an object is moving or the rate at which an object covers a distance. Speed is always positive and cannot be zero. Okay. So we have here, a fast moving object has a high speed and covers a relatively large distance in a short amount of time. While a slow-moving object that has a low speed, it covers a relatively small amount of distance in the same amount of time. An object with no movement at all has a zero speed. So, wrong na nyan ko na dali, no? Nasayop na siya, Adri. So, speed can be zero and is always positive. Okay? Nakita na to, Adri, sa dua na to ka-example, ang, ang fast-moving moving object daw, Siyempre, na siya high speed and makakover siya distance sa gamay nga oras. While kaling slow-moving slow object, 
na siya low speed and gamay ra pud ang iyahang makover nga distance in a long span of time. In that sm- uh, same amount of time. Okay? So, if you are at rest, your speed is zero. Okay? So, we have this average speed. So, it measures the average rate of speed over the extent of a trip. Okay? Money mo hang average speed sa mo hang total nga hidagan. Okay? And we have the formula of speed which is equal to distance over time or d over t. And the SI unit of speed is meters per second because the SI unit of distance is meters and the SI unit of time is seconds. So that is meters per second. And we have here an example. So a bus covered 2.4 kilometers or 2,400 meters in 4 minutes or 240 seconds. So find the average speed of the bus in meters per second. So we have the formula of average speed that is distance over time, so which is equal to 2,400 meters over 240 seconds. And our speed, average speed for the total trip of the bus is 10 meters per second. So another example we have. John drove for three hours at a rate of 50 miles per hour and for two hours at 60 miles per hour. What was his average speed for the whole journey? So we have we are given T1 is equal to three hours, V1 is equal to 50 miles per hour, T2 is equal to two hours, and V2 is equal to 50 miles per hour. So first, we are going to find the distance covered by these two instances. For distance one, no, di ba ang formula sa ito ang speed is equal to distance over time. And we can calculate distance if we cross multiply speed and time. So distance is equal to speed times time. So to calculate our distance one, we have speed one times T1. Speed 1 is 50 miles per hour and T, T1 is 3 hours. So 50 times 3 is 150 miles. So muna ang distance ng imong i-cover sa imuhang sa first nga instance. Kung distance 2, we have speed 2 times T2. Okay? So that would be our speed 2 is 60 meters, ay 60 miles per hour and our T2 is 2 hours. 60 times 2 is 120 miles. So, di ba, itong average speed is D over T or total distance over total time. So, for total distance, we are going to add both distances, 150 plus 120, all over total time, which is 3 hours plus 2 hours. So, we, we, are, we are, the resulting uh, fraction is 270 miles over 5 hours. So 270 divided by 5 is 54. So 54 miles per hour. So the average speed of John for the whole journey was 54 miles per hour. Okay? So pangitaan nyo na to ang total distance all over total time pag mangita ta sa ato ang average speed. Next example, suppose a cyclist travels in segments that are described in the following table. So we have segment 1, ang yan distance is 30 and time 10. For segment 2, we have 45, then 15. For segment 3, we have 50, then 20. For segment 4, we have 65, then 30. Again, our solution, our speed is equal to total distance over time. So... Atong buhaton lang is we have distant, total distance over time. So our total distance is 30 plus 45 plus 50 plus 65, which is equal to 190 meters, all over 10 plus 15 plus 20 plus 30 seconds, 75 seconds. So 190 divided by 75 is 2.53 meters per second. 
So again, atong ipangita ang total distance sa iyang trip and ang total time sa iyang trip. No? Total distance over total time and that is our average speed. So next example, so pretend you walk you went on a walk through your neighborhood. You walk 5 kil kilometers to the neighborhood park and it takes you 45 minutes. You stop and rest for 25 minutes at the park and then you walk 5 kilometers back home. It takes you 15 minutes to walk back home from the park. So calculate the average speed. So again, in order to find our, 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 our average speed, we're going to find the total distance all over total time. So our total distance back and forth, so padulong, 5 kilometers, and pabalik is 5 kilometers. So our total distance is 10 kilometers. For our total time, we have 45 minutes padulong sa park, plus 25 minutes nga nag ka sa park, plus 50 minutes nga pauli ka sa inyong balay. And that is a total of 120 minutes. And 120 minutes is equal to 2 hours. So 10 kilometers all over 2 hours is 5 kilometers per hour. So ang imuhang average speed coming from your house to your to the park, pabalik nga nagpahulay pa ka sa park, yan pabalik si mong balay, is 5 kilometers per hour. So again, atong gibuat is find the total distance and then divide it by the total time. So we have instantaneous speed. So instantaneous speed is when the speed of an object is constantly changing and it is the speed of an object at a particular moment in time. So we have this, no? So so katanaw na to sa graph, so ang iyahang average kay kaning uh kaning pink na line, then sa iyang instantaneous kay kaning black na line, no? So mo naglahi ang iyahang speed at different times no mo na ang instantaneous na speed so let's say for example sa starting from rest we have the our distance is equal to 0 miles our time is equal to 0 seconds no so at the um, second na to nga instant let's say we have d is equal to 0. 0.04027788 miles and our time is 5 seconds. So kung i-calculate na itong instantaneous speed at 5 seconds, ang atong makuha is 0 0.0080556 miles per second. On the other hand, sa so next na itong uh, instant at 100 seconds na pod. And our distance is given as 0 0.974465 miles. So we're going to divide that and we will get 0 0.0097-4465 miles per second. Okay, nine instances, ipapangita sa tuwa ang instantaneous speed. No? So what is the speed of this object at 5 seconds, at 10 seconds, at 15 seconds? No? So muna siyang ginatawag na ito instantaneous speed. So makita na ito sa itong nasolve na lahi ang, ang speed at 5 seconds and lahi po ang speed at 100 seconds. So same lang yan po ng pagkuha sa speed is distance over time. So now we go to velocity. So velocity is the displacement of the body per unit time. So it is a vector quantity. So it has magnitude and direction. And also it can be positive, negative, or zero depending on the displacement. So the formula for velocity is Final displacement or final position minus initial position all over the change in time. Now, delta, kanang a symbol, denotes change. So, in simpler terms, velocity is the change of displacement over change of time. So, let's try to look at this example, the difference sa speed and velocity. So, speed is simply how fast you are traveling. So, ang magnitude lang ni mo. So this car is traveling at a speed of 20 meters per second. Well, velocity is speed in a given direction. So unsa ka kapaspas mag-travel sa kaninga direction. And we have this, this car is traveling at a velocity of 20 meters per second piece. It would, so just like distance and displacement, distance is scalar. 
speed is scalar, displacement is vector, and velocity is also vector. So not the different conditions in velocity. So if there is no change in the magnitude and direction, an object is said to be in constant velocity. So kung wala kay change sa imong magnitude and direction, no? So, for example, constant speed lang ka and padulong lang yapon ka sa east at that moment, it is said to be that you are in a constant velocity. And instantaneous velocity of an object is its velocity at different time intervals. So, the same, kung naatay instantaneous speed, nabutay instantaneous velocity. Okay? So, let's try to analyze these two questions. Number one question, it is the speedometer of a car reads 100 kilometers per hour in five seconds. Does the car have a constant velocity? Yes or no, why? So I will give you 10 seconds to think about it. Kung naabay constant velocity ang car, nga nagdagan 100 kilometers per hour in five seconds. Okay, time is up. So the answer here is maybe. Okay, maybe. So we can see that nagdagan siya o ano, nagdagan siya o 100 kilometers in five per hour in five seconds. So constant ang yahang speed. But dili ta sure kung constant ba ang yung direction. What if nagdagan siya ano pero nilikyo siya gamay or ni nilahi siya direction. So kung nilahi ang direction, dili na constant ang mong velocity. Kaya di ba kung constant velocity, dapat constant ang imong speed and direction? Constant imong speed, pero dili ta sure kung constant pa imong direction. So that is why, nga nung maybe ang ato ang answer. Okay? So the next example na itong naunaon is, the speedometer of a car moving east reads 60 kilometers per hour. It passes another car that travels west at 60 kilometers per hour. So do both car have the same speed? And do they have the same velocity? Yes or no, and why? Okay, time's up. So do both cars have the same speed? They are both running at 60 kilometers. So we can conclude that both cars have the same speed. But do they have the same velocity? Okay. Na conclude na to sa unang question, they have same speed. So same magnitude. But dili ang velocity di ba kay magnitude and direction? And one car is moving to the east and one and the other car is moving to the west. So do they have the same direction? No. So if that is the case, we have same magnitude but different direction, they don't still have the same velocity. So dapat Katong two conditions, magnitude and direction, kay ma, ma comply, no? Na the same sila, para makaingunta nga, they have the same velocity. Okay? So, now let's now move to acceleration. So, what is acceleration? So, this is the rate of change in velocity with respect to time. So, in formula form, this is the difference between your final velocity and initial velocity all over the time interval. Or that is the change in velocity all over change in time. So let's say, for example, we have a runner traveling at certain direction at 10 meters per second increases his velocity to 20 meters per second in 5 seconds. So find his acceleration. So for our uh, final velocity, the increase down niya to 20 meters per second. So that is our final velocity. Well, ang initial velocity nato is 10 meters per second. So katong speed nga, giingon sa problem nga, gisugda niya. So that is our initial velocity. And then our time interval is 5 seconds. So ato i minus ang atong final and initial, that is 20 minus 10, and that is 10 meters per second all over. 5 seconds. So 10 divided by 5 is 2 meters per second squared. Okay, so um, pasabot anong 2 meters per second squared, no? So the runner accelerates 2 meters per second per second. 
So, gaad siya og 2 meters per second sa iyahang speed every second. Okay? So, muna siya ang uh, logic or ang explanation sa acceleration. Okay? Ito nakagets, no? So, there are only two ways for you to accelerate. You have to change your speed or change your direction or change both. Okay? So, let's have an example, can you figure? I'm accelerating because I'm speeding up. Okay, I'm accelerating because I'm speeding up. Nag-change as a young speed, therefore, the increase niya yung speed, therefore, nag-accelerate siya. And that our acceleration is positive. Okay, nag-increase man niya yung speed. And I'm, I'm also accelerating because I'm slowing down. Again, nag-change ang iyahang speed. So, the boy is accelerating pero ang atong acceleration sa kaninga case is less than zero because nag-slow down siya. So kung nag-speed up, nag-positive ang atong acceleration, kung nag-slow down, negative ang atong acceleration. And negative acceleration is also called deceleration. And tanala na ito kaning B na naglupad, the B is accelerating because the B is changing directions. So nag-accelerate ya pun ka bisan og constant speed pero nag-change ka og direction. So you are accelerating. Okay? So tanaw na to sa so mga ga-drive diri, natay pedals, we have brake pedal and the accelerator pedal. Accelerator pedal mo niya to ang positive acceleration kay uh, pagtamakan nato ti mag na, pag matamakan nato ni, no? Mag-speed up ta. Kung tamaka na to atong brake pedal, this is also called decelerator, no? Kay mag-slow down ta kung tamaka na to ato ang brake pedal. Okay, so negative ang atong acceleration kung tamaka na to ato ang brake pedal. Okay? So another, we have velocity and acceleration are both vector quantities. So its values heavily rely on the direction of the motion. So to remember, uh, vector quantities rely on magnitude and direction. So let's say we have we have this. Kung slowing down ka, positive ang imuhang velocity, but negative ang imuhang acceleration. So you are slowing down. Kung speeding up, positive ang imuhang acceleration and positive ang imuhang velocity. Same lang yapo, no? Kung slowing down ka, negative ang imong velocity, and then positive ang imong acceleration. Kung speeding up po, negative imong velocity, negative po di imong acceleration. So in conclusion, kung opposite direction, you are slowing down. But kung same direction ang velocity na acceleration, you are speeding up. Okay? So let's try to answer these following problems. So a neurotic Neurotic tiger shark starts from rest and speeds up uniformly to 12 meters per second in a time of 3 seconds. So what was the magnitude of the average acceleration of the tiger shark? So we are given, Giingon nga starts from rest so that our initial velocity is 0. And we speed up to 12 meters per second so that is our final velocity. And in a time of 3 seconds. So at our time is 3 seconds. So the formula for acceleration again is final velocity minus initial velocity all over time. So that is 12 meters per second minus 0 meters per second all over 3 seconds. And 12 minus 0 is 12 divided by 3. And so we have 4 meters per second squared. So ang average acceleration sa atong tiger shark is 4 meters per second. Okay, 4 meters per second squared. So we have another example. A bald eagle is flying to the left with a speed of 34 meters per second when a gust of wind blows back against the eagle, causing it to slow down with a constant acceleration of a magnitude 8 meters per second squared. So what will this what will the speed of the bald eagle be after the wind was blown for three seconds? So you are given we have initial velocity is equal to negative 34 meters per second, and our time is three seconds are why negative ang ato ang initial velocity because uh, flying to the left man so that is uh, also west we are 
going to set the value of our initial velocity to negative 34 meters per second. And that our time is three seconds and we are going up we are given a constant acceleration of a magnitude 8 meters per second squared. So to find this, again, the formula of acceleration is the final velocity minus initial velocity all over time. And we are going to find the final velocity. No? So to find the final velocity, we are going to perform some mathematical operation. We are going to multiply, cross-multiply the acceleration and time then transpose our initial velocity. Then we will have our equation for to find the final velocity, which is the final velocity is equal to the initial velocity plus acceleration times time. So we input our final velocity is negative 34 meters per second. Our acceleration is 8 meters per second squared times our time, which is 3 seconds. And that is negative 10 meters per second. But the asta kung saan speed, so kung na to ang positive value, which is 10 meters per second. Di ba kay speed is always positive? So kani siya, velocity ni siya. So na siya ay negative sign. But we are asked about the speed. So 10 meters per second ang ato ang iingon. Okay? Atong final answer kay speed man. Pero kung di pangutana is velocity, then we okay na ni siya nga negative 10 meters per second. Pero speed man, so we are going to take the positive value, and that is 10 meters per second. Okay, so we are now on our uniform acceleration in one dimension. Okay, so pasabot ng uniform acceleration, constant ang yung acceleration, and in one dimension lang. So either in the x axis, or the horizontal axis, or the y axis, or the vertical axis. Okay, so let's try to understand first. Kinematics. So kinematics is the study of motion of a system of bodies without directly considering the forces or potential fields affecting the motion. So we have four basic kinem kinematics equations no, for horizontal motion. And let's watch first kung giunsan ipag-derive ang atuang four kinematics equations. What I want to show you now are a couple derivations of what we'll call kinematic equations, or equations that describe the motion of objects. Uh, I've already started with a couple definitions of which you're already familiar up on the board. I've got the definition of average velocity right here, and the definition of average acceleration right here. Before we go a whole lot further, I'm going to rearrange those and get some more useful forms of those equations. Um, to, to our ends here to derive those equations. So I can rearrange my equation for average velocity to find that displacement equals average velocity times time. Some very simple algebra there. And of course, I can always break down average acceleration into final velocity minus initial velocity. Remember, change is always final minus initial over time. Um, what I can do actually is rearrange what we just wrote here for average acceleration and I can actually get my first kinematic equation. You can do a little bit of algebra and find that final velocity is equal to initial velocity plus acceleration times time. And you'll often find that in textbooks given as, uh, as a kinematic equation and that'll be useful. We'll use that in the future. Uh, I also want to come over here to the left hand side and convince you that finding average velocity is actually quite easy, especially if you have a constant acceleration, which we will always have. Uh, you can actually find this average velocity the same way that you would find the average of two test scores. You would just add them up and divide by two. So in this case, I'll add up the initial velocity plus the final velocity and divide by two. So if I take this form of average velocity and plug it into our, uh, to our equation here for displacement, I can see that displacement is equal to average velocity times time. What I'm going to do then is I'm going to take this equation and this equation, and I will multiply them together. This is a little math trick that you'll use a little bit more moving uh, ahead into the future. 
Um, but what I can do is just multiply the two sides of this equation together. So from the left-hand sides of the equation, I will have delta x, and I will have acceleration. Notice I'm going to leave off the average part of acceleration because we're always going to be dealing with constant accelerations. So that should be equal to the two right-hand sides of the equations multiplied together. So from the blue equation, I'll have the following. And from the green equation, I will have this. Now what you're going to see is that I've got a T on the top and a T on the bottom. Those will cancel. And really what I'm left with is this. I've got acceleration times delta x, just flipping those around. Uh, and then if you foil the tops here, the vi plus vf and the vf minus vi, if you foil those, what you'll get down to is this. I'm going to pull out the one half from that first expression. And the foiling will give you this. We multiply both sides by 2 and add an initial velocity squared, you'll find the version of this equation that is in most textbooks and the one that I'll be writing on the board throughout the course of the quarter, and it looks like this. And here is our first derived kinematic equation, one that you'll see me write on the board and we will use time and time again. Let's derive another. I would like to start with these two equations. One you saw on the last page. And the other you did as well. Instead of multiplying these two equations together, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take our expression for final velocity that we have right here, and I'm going to substitute that in to the equation over here for final velocity. When I do this, I'll be able to get a formula for displacement that doesn't depend on final velocity at all. And so you'll see I'll have something like this. Displacement equals, I'm going to have the final velocity from right over here, and I'll have vi plus at. and then the rest of what I had on the right-hand side over here. Now, if I pull out the one-half, I'll get something like this. I've got two initial velocities, and an acceleration times time, and another t hanging out outside here. So if I pull in the t, I will be left with this. And here's the last of our kinematic equations. All in all, these four kinematic equations will be incredibly useful for us throughout the remainder of the quarter. And I didn't want you to think that I was pulling them out of thin air, so there you go. Okay, so I hope uh, nakasabot na nun sa pag-derive ato ang four basic kinematics equations. No? Nga magamit yun na to when we are going to solve uh, kinematics equations in one dimension. Okay? So let's have for this example, an airplane accelerates down a runway at 3.20 meters per second squared for 32.8 seconds until it finally lifts off the ground. Determine the distance traveled before takeoff. So we are given an acceleration na tay 3.20 meters per second, na put tay time, which is 32.8 seconds, and na tay initial velocity. Siyempre, kay mag-start yun na siya sa at rest. So, at rest, we have 0 meters per second. So, na tay acceleration, na tay time, and na tay initial velocity. So, unsa ka sa ato ang uh, kinematics equation na atong magamit, na na tay initial velocity, time, and acceleration. So, magamit nato ang ato ang equation C. 
since timing pod nga atong gipangita is distance. Okay? So, equation C is the distance is equal to initial velocity times time plus one half a t squared. So, input na to, initial velocity is zero, time 32.8 plus one half, then acceleration is 3.20, then our time is 3.28. Then 0 times 32.8 is good as 0. So we have 1 half times 3.20 times 3.28 squared. So palihug ko input sa inyo ang calculators. And after ninyo ma-input, ang makuha na itong answer is 1,721.344 meters. So again, sa itong pag-solve, Ani, we look for the given and then Tarun na ito sa kinematics equation, unsa nga given ang nahatag and unsa ang atong gipangita. So ang gihatag sa atong given is acceleration, time, and initial velocity. So kompleto sa ani sa equation C. And timing pod, no, sakto na pod, nga atong gipangita is distance. Okay, so perfect ang atong equation C para gamiton ani nga problem. Okay, so let's try to answer this another problem. So a bike accelerates uniformly from rest to a speed of 7.10 meters per second over a distance of 35.4 meters. So determine the acceleration of the bike. So we are given a distance of 35.4 meters. That is our delta x. Our final velocity is 7.10 meters per second. And our initial velocity is 0 meters per second. So, atong gipangita is the acceleration of the bike. Okay? So, naatay final velocity, naatay initial velocity, and naatay distance. So, unsa kaha, yung equation dari sa upat, ang atong magamit, nga naatay VF, VI, and delta X. Pero wala tayo gata time, so dili na itong magamit itong equations nga naay time. And ang naay time nga equations is A, B, and C. And ang D lang ang wala. And kung tananawa na ito, sakto nga VF, VI, and delta X ang given. And na siya A, which is ang ato ang required nga answer. Okay? Required, required na itong value. So, ang equation D ang atong gamiton. So, VF squared is equal to VI squared plus 2AX. Okay? So, to find A, kailangan na ito i-isolate siya sa isa ka side. So, we transpose VI squared sa PCAS and that would become negative VI squared and then divide na to sa 2 and delta X. So to find the acceleration, input na to, final velocity is 7.10 meters per second and we square minus our initial velocity kay from rest man. So syempre kung re from rest, 0 ang initial. So minus 0 meters per second squared all over 2 times atong change of x or atong distance is 35.4 meters. So if i-calculate na ito na siya sa atong calculator, ang atong makuha ang answer is 0 0.712 meters per second squared. So again, kung ang tanaw na ito ang given, ang tanaw na ito ang required, ang tanaw na ito sa ato ang equations, sa atong upat ka-equations, kung sa ang perfect na magamit. Wala tayo given nga time, so katong na ay time nga equation, dili na nato to siya magamit. No? Wala na to siya. And we are left with one and timing code nga halos ang tulo pag given kay naa and ang A nga itong gipangita kay naa. So, mo ito ang itong gigamit kay D. So, once we learn nga maka tanout ta kung saan given ang required and sa equations, dali na din kayo kayo mag-input. Input na lang mo ta then i-manipulate na itong equation para ma-isolate na itong gipangita. So, ito lang siya. Uh, kung ano, practice lang yun. Siya, no? So, next example, we have a car traveling at 22.4 meters per second. Skids to a stop in 2.55 seconds. Determine the skidding distance of the car and let's assume it has a uniform acceleration. So, let's... Ang skating di ay, no? Is a vehicle slide, typically slide sideways or obliquely on slippery ground or as a result of stopping or turning too quickly. So, mo na itong mausahin, makita na ito sa movies, no? Parang, mo, parang slide ang dalan, so mag-swerve siya from left and right. Mura siya ka ng uh, snake, S-motion, no? Mura siya ang skating. 
So we are given time is equal to 2.55 seconds and our final velocity is 0 meters per second because ni stop siya, no? And our initial velocity is 22.4 meters per second. Okay? So we are given time, final velocity, and initial velocity. And pangitao na to ang distance. Okay? So unsa ka atong mapangita dari? Unsa ka ang uh, equation atong magamit? Naabot tayo acceleration? Wala tayo, wala, tayo, wala tayo given yung acceleration. You know? So katung na ay mga equation nga na ay acceleration, dili na to siya magamit. So ang naay acceleration is B, C, and D. Walang A, wala siya acceleration. And tanong, tanaw na to ang tanan given, which is ang VF plus VI and T kay na A. And ang itong required niya delta X, delta X ay naka-isolate na daan. So this is the perfect uh, equation to solve for this problem. So we have delta X is equal to VF plus VI all over 2 times T. So our VF is 0 meters per second because this stop siya. No? And ato ang VI is 22.4 meters per second all over 2 times our time that is 2.55 seconds. So our delta X, kung i-kuha na siya, i-input na siya sa calculator, we will get 28.56 meters. Okay? So that is our distance nga gitravel, a skating distance nga gitravel sa car. Okay, so again, find the given, find the required, look at the equation kung unsa ang pinaka-perfect nga gamiton, and we try to input or kung kailangan i-manipulate ang equation para mapangita to ato ang uh, required na sa value sa atong problem. Okay? So next example, we have a plane has a takeoff speed of 88.3 meters per second and requires 1,365 meters to reach that speed. Determine the acceleration of the plane and the time required to reach this speed. Okay, so we are given distance, which is 1,365 meters. Our final velocity is 88.3 meters per second and our initial velocity is 0 meters per second. And we are going to find the acceleration and the time required to reach this speed. So kung tanaw na to, we are given delta x, vf, and vi. So, and we are going to find the acceleration first. So unsa nga equation dere ang ato ang magamit. And since wala tayo time nga given pa, ipangitaon pa mapod na to siya. So tanan equation nga na ay time sa ilaha is dili na to magamit, which is ang a, b, and c. So, Timing po, uh, ang given is VF, VI, and delta X, and atong gipangita kay A. So, ang perfect equation na atong gamitan dari is ang letter D. So, we have VF squared is equal to VI squared plus 2A delta X. So, atong na po i-manipulate ang atong equation, i-isolate na to ang A. You tr we transpose VI squared sa pika side, so we have VF squared minus VI squared all over divide na to ang 2 and delta x. So that's 2 delta x, over 2 delta x. So we uh, substitute our values to our uh, variables. We have vf squared, that is 88.3 meters per second squared, minus initial velocity is 0, okay, nag start siya from rest. So that is 0 meters per second squared, all over 2 times our distance, which is 1,365 meters. And then we, if we try to calculate that and using our calculator, we will get an acceleration of 2.856 meters per second squared. Okay, so naana tayo acceleration. So muna ang acceleration nga requires sa plane, no? Para maka take off siya. Okay, so unsa man ang time nga dapat nga required uh, to reach that speed. So the mga tatong pangitaon sunod. So we are given again delta x, vf, vi, and na karon na natay a. And unsa ka ang pinakadali dari nga equation nga atong magamit nga naata sa mga given and napud ato ang required. So try to look at letter b na atay final velocity, na atay initial velocity, and na natay acceleration and required nato kay time na lang. Okay? So magamit nato ang letter b. Okay? So to find 
So, VF is equal to VI plus AT. Okay? Pwede po na ito magamit ng letter C, no? Kaya nabot tayo delta X, natay VI, nabot tayo A. Pero, dito tugid ta sa masa yun, no? Which is letter B. Okay? So, atong gipangita is letter, uh, letter, uh, value of time. So, we are going to try to isolate the time. So, we transpose VI sa pikas nga side. We have VF minus VI all over divided by time. So, VF minus VI all over A. So, time is equal to 88.3 meters per second minus R initial, which is 0 meters per second, all over our calculated nga acceleration, which is 2.856 meters per second squared. And that is equal to time is equal to 30.8 seconds. Okay, so atong acceleration, 2.856 meters per second squared, and our time is 30.8 seconds. So, nine times nga sa problem, duwang uh, tuang required nga pangitaon, no? Okay, so mag-decide lang yun ta kung unsa atong unahon nga pangita. Okay, okay. Na ay sometimes nga una siya dimension sa problem, pero dili pa na to siya ma-find kung wala na to, to define ang second nga na mention. So in this case, una na mention ang acceleration. So una na to siya defined and luckily, mapangita na na to siya even without the time. Pero di na to mapangita ang time kung wala ang acceleration. So una na to pangita ang acceleration. So una, so same lang gyapon na itong gibuhat, given, required, then tanaw sa equation unsa ang pinaka fit nga gamiton and then sa next pag find na pod na natay na find nga acceleration so gipangita na to tong ECS nga equation nga pwede na to magamit no magamit na to ang B and C sa pag find sa time kinaat kompleto ta given pero tanan na to ang C medyo complicated siya compared sa letter B so katong letter B atong gamiton kano maglisod-lisod man ta sa ato ang uh, pag solve nga pwede man na to maka maka save ta og time maka save ta og effort okay so, ingatan lang siya. No? Practice lang yun. Pangita. Ano. So, next example. We have rocket-powered sleds are used to test the human response to acceleration. So, if a rocket-powered sled is accelerated to a speed of 444 meters per second in 1.83 seconds, then what is the acceleration and what is the distance that the sled travels? Okay. So, we are given... Time, 1.83 seconds. Our final velocity is 444 meters per second. And our initial velocity is 0 meters per second. So, naatay VF, VI, and T. So, and we are going to find our, our acceleration. So, unsa nga equation diri from A, B, C, and D ang pwede na ito magamit? Letter B. Oh, kompleto ang atong given VF, VI, and time. And sakto po nga atong gipangita is acceleration. So we have VF is equal to VI plus AT. And we're going to isolate A kay mga ito ang required. And that is VF minus VI all over T. So input lang na to, VF is 444 meters per second minus initial na 0 meters per second all over our time na 1.83 seconds. And our calculated uh, acceleration is 242.63 meters per second squared. And next, nga gipangita is ang distance nga the sled travels. Okay? So, unsa, unsa ka atong magamit rin, no? So, naatay, uh, naatay pwede na ito magamit ang ato ang pwede ito magamit ang uh, A, C, and D. No? Okay. Uh, nasa lay delta x. Kompleto tao given. Natay time, natay acceleration. Okay. Pero let's try to go uh, on. Let's try to use letter C. No? Let's try to use letter C for this problem. Again, pwede na ito magamit ang A and D. Kompleto tao given. And kipangita is delta x. No? So sa inyo na lang karon I-try ninyo gamit ang A and D. No? Kung same ba ang answer nga itong makuha. Pero karon let's try to use letter C. So, letter C, delta X is equal to VIT plus 1 half AT squared. So, input na to VI is 0. 
our time is 1.83. One half times our acceleration, 242.63 meters per second squared times our time, 1.83 seconds squared. So zero times 1.83 is good as zero. So kanina na lang itong i-calculate and kung makalculate na ito siya, gamit itong calculator, we are going to find that our delta x is equal to 406.27 meters. Okay, so napangita na itong acceleration nga 242.63 meters per second squared and atong delta x nga 406.27 meters. So atong na notice dere, eh, no? Nga natay tulo ka equations nga magamit. And sa letter A mo ni siyang simplest. Okay, mo ni simplest. Now there are times siguro kung gusto ka mag-experiment or kana sa practice nga problems, kay kung pwede ni mo magamit ang tulo, itry ni mag solve ang gamit ang tulo. No? Paka-practice na po dyan si Mukay para ma-familiarize ni mo ang mga equations. No? So mukha itong gigamit na ito dire kay letter C nga equation. No? Instead, katong simplest, nalaya kong ganyan ka ganihan nga simplest ang atong gamiton. No? Now, now times na, mahulag lagi eh, na mag-try taong lain. Okay? Pero lang maka-practice tayo, ma-familiarize na ito atong self. So same process, given, required, equation, and solve, then find na to ato ang katong second nga gipangita then given na pod required then tanod pud ta sa atong equation unsa ang pinakatsada nga gamiton in this case gi try na to ang c and napangita na to ang atong distance okay now discuss about free fall motion so free fall motion is a uh, free falling bodies are good examples of uniformly accelerated motion so it is found that freely falling bodies are accelerated toward the center of Earth under the action of gravity. And atong value sa atong acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared. So, so it is uniformly accelerated motion because it all it is the same all throughout all free falling bodies. Nga na value nga 9.8 meters per second squared. So we have this. Um, summary sa ato ang mga sa ato ang changes no sa pag free fall motion so our initial velocity is equal to 0 sa ato ang initial nga position so initial starting point sa imong uh, sa along sa imong vertical axis kay kuha naman ta free fall naman ta so vertical na atong panahon then y is equal to 0 if the object ends the problem at the same elevation it started at okay so for example 5 meters ang Elevation, same mohang uh, object, and at the end of the problem, 5 meters yapon. So y is equal to 0. Let's say kung if the object, so y is equal uh, positive value if the object ends the problem at a higher elevation than it started. So kung for example, again, 5 meters ang mohang initial, uh, initial elevation, then nag end siya to 7 meters, then our y value is positive. Then our y value is negative kung opposite ang mahitabo kung lower elevation po dyan nag-end. Okay, so five meter, from 5 meters to 3 meters, our value is negative. Then y is equal to initial position if it lands at the same elevation of the problem it began with. Okay, so kung zero ang imuhang, uh, zero ang imuhang initial position, so zero po ang imuhang y kung ni balik siya dito sa same elevation. So 5 meters, then 5 meters di ako. So our acceleration, g is equal to negative 9.8 meters per second squared for objects falling on Earth. Okay? So for our initial velocity, our initial velocity along the y-axis is equal to 0 if drop from rest. So same lang yapon kung horizontal motion. Our initial velocity is 0 kung from rest. So our initial velocity is positive Kung if fired upward, kung, giba, kung gilabay na nato ang object, pataas. And kung initial velocity nato is negative, if fired downward, kung gilabay po nato siya, paubos. So naghatagtag force, paubos, or naghatagtag force, pataas. Okay, naghatagtag speed, velocity. So kung sa final velocity po, our final velocity is zero. So at the moment, it reaches maximum altitude right before falling back to Earth. So this is often called na to ang maximum altitude is y max. So at that moment sa so y max na to, ang final velocity then na to is 0. 
Okay, kung pag-abot pag niya sa peak altitude niya, muhunong siya kadali, and that is zero, then mo balik na din siya pagbaba. Okay? So, moto siya nga ang final velocity at that moment sa y max is equal to zero. Our final velocity is positive kung if it hits something on the way up and never reaches maximum altitude. So, kung natay gilabay, then naay harang that I did to, our final velocity is positive. No? Kung wala siya nakaabot sa iyang peak unta ang altitude, makaabot unta siya kung wala itong nagharang, pero since naaman to siya, wala na siya nakareach sa iyang maximum altitude. And our final velocity is positive. Our final velocity is negative on the return trip. Kung nibalik na siya, our final velocity is negative. Okay, from gikan sa iyang uh, peak, then nibalik na siya, so atong final velocity is negative. So, muna ito ang kinematics equations for free fall motion. So, same lang yapon sa ito ang horizontal motion ng kinematics equation. Ang nalahi lang is ang A na to is equal to negative G. So, tanan A na to is kipulihan na to of negative G. So, may ang. So, uh, muna ito ang uh, kinematics equation for free fall motion. For letter A, change of Y. Then, ang change of X na di ay kinahimo na siyang change of Y for free fall motion. So change of y is equal to vf plus vi all over 2 times t. Then for our b, we have vf is equal to vi minus gt. Diba sa kinematics nga horizontal plus a t mani? Karoon minus gt na. So c na to, change of y is equal to vi t minus 1 half gt squared. So sa ito ang kinematics equation nga horizontal plus 1 half a t squared na siya. Karoon negative 1 half gt squared. Next is Vf squared is equal to Vi squared minus 2G times the change of Y. So, sa horizontal, plus 2A. Sa free fall, negative 2G. Okay, so let's try to solve some problems. So, the observation deck of tall skyscraper 370 meters above the street. So, natay uh, skyscraper 370 meters tall. And then the determine the time required for a penny to free fall from the deck to, us, to the street below. So we have our acceleration due to gravity, which is 9.8 meters per second squared. And then we have our change of y is equal to negative 370 meters. Y negative can nagsugod ka sa taas pa ubos. So mas low ang elevation na niya sa end of the problem. So that's why negative ang ato ang uh, change of y. And our initial velocity is 0 meters per second. Kai from rest ang atong penny. Okay? So natin acceleration, change of y, uh, distance, and vi. So atong pangitaon is time required. So unsa ka atong magamit tari nga equation, no? Yan na ato ang given. So na atay g, change of y, and vi, and time is required. So ato ang magamit dari is letter c. No? So, complete ang ato ang uh, atong given and timing and sakto ang ato ang required is T. Okay? So, we are going to use equation letter C. So, change of Y is equal to VIT minus 1 half GT squared. So, minus 370 meters is equal to uh, 0 meters per second times, y, times time. Minus 1 half, ang ato ang acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared t squared. So, we have negative 370 meters is equal to negative 4.9 meters per second squared t squared. Okay, so we divide 370 divided by 4.9 and then take the root of that. We have t is equal to 8.69 seconds. So, same ra sa atong ginabuhat sa horizontal motion. First, Identify the given, identify the required, and then also sa ato ang four kinematics equation for free fall motion, kung unsa ang pinaka fit ng ato magamit. And kompleto atong given for uh, C and atong gipangita is T. So letter C ng equation ang atong gamit. Okay? Next problem a construction worker accidentally drops a brick from a high scaffold. So letter A, what is the velocity of the brick after 4 seconds? So we are given G is still 9.8 meters per second squared. Our time is 4 seconds and our VI is 0 meters per second. Okay, so to solve, ang atong pangitaon na to, 
we're given G, T, and V, I. At ang pangita is final velocity. So, unsa nga equation na itong gamitin ka, Ani? So, kompleto ta o V, I, G, and T. So, perfect kid kayo nga magamit na ito ay letter B. Okay? So, VF is equal to VI minus GT. So, VF is equal to VI, na ito is 0 meters per second, minus 9.8 meters per second squared times 4 seconds. And so, we have VF is equal to negative 39.2 meters per second, or kung i-positive na ito siya, so, pahin mo siya, final velocity is 39.2 meters per second downward. Okay, again, the negative is delete yung dihang value, but Ya, signify siya sa direction which is downward so kung ma-positive siya magbutang na din taog downward sa iyahang tapad for letter B how far does the brick fall during this time so we are going to find our change of Y and again we are given V, I, T, and G so ang um, perfect siguro na ito magamit ani is uh, to ang C and then pwede na ito gamito na ito ang letter A na po Okay, since naaman tayo VF and VI, eh nabot tayo time. Pwede po nato gamito na itong D. Kaya nabot tayo VI, VF, VI, and G. Di ba? All, all these equations will give you the value of change of Y. Pero since kung man ta, pwede ka po nato gamito. So, pwede rin ka po mo mag-try sa A and D. And pwede po mag- sa, But in this equation, gamito na ito ang letter C nga equation. Okay, so letter C is equal to VIT minus 1 half GT squared. So input lang nato, our VI is 0, T is 4 seconds minus 1 half 9.8 or G, and T is equal to 4 seconds squared. And then we are going to calculate this in our calculator and we will get negative 78.4 meters. And so kung i-positive nato siya, magbutang taog again downward kay negative man. So, the change of Y is 78.4 meters downward. Okay? So, atong final velocity is 39.2 meters per second downward. And our change of Y is 78.4 meters downward. So, atong gibuhat, find the given, identify the required, then tanaw sa equation, sa nga fit ang atong magamit. And sa ito ang pagpangita sa change of Y, makagamit ang tulo. No? So, in your, kung ano na siya, discretion kung siya yung gamiton, kung gusto ba kaglisod, gusto ka bagagsayon, gusto ka bagdali, to save time, to save effort. No? So, ikaw na bahala. Okay. In any case, uh, kung ano lang man na siya, same lang magyabi mo makuha ang value ana. Okay? So, let's go, proceed to the next uh, problem. So, a tennis ball is thrown straight up with an initial speed of 22.5 meters per second. It is caught at the same distance above the ground. So high, ha, how letter A is how high does the ball rise? Okay, so ang gipangita na to ani is ang ato ang peak altitude or ato ang y max. So we are given g is equal to 9.8 meters per second squared, and our vi is equal to 22.4, 22.5 meters per second. Okay, so thrown straight up so it is a positive initial velocity kay imo gilabay pataas so initial speed nimo is positive 22.5 meters per second and ang ato ang vf natay value sa vf which is 0 wala lang nato nabutang dire pero ato ang value sa vf is 0 because again at peak altitude no katong pinakataas niya nga makaya at that moment ang zero ang atong final velocity is 0 okay na so naatay VF, na tayo VI, and na tayo G. And na itong gipangita is the change of Y or ang atong Y max. So, if we try, so wala tayo given nga time. So, atong, di na itong magamit ang, ang mga equations nga na ay time. Such as B, A, B, and C. So, T atong magamit and sakto, given, ang atong given is complete and gipangita na ito is change of Y. So, gamito na ito ang equation D. We have v is, VF squared is equal to VI squared minus 2G times the change of Y. And then we try to manipulate and isolate change of Y is equal to transpose na to ang VI squared sa uh, PCAS. And then we have VF squared minus VI squared all over 2G, negative 2G. 
And so we input lang na to, VF is zero minus 22.5 meters per second squared all over negative two times 9.8 meters per second squared. And we will get 25.829 meters. So that is our Y max. Okay. This is positive because nagsugod ka sa ubos, padulong sa taas, so higher elevation ang end sa problem. So for letter V, V, letter B, sorry. So how long does the ball remain in the air? So hint, the time it takes the ball to rise equals the time it takes to fall. Okay? So the time daw na pataas siya, padulong sa peak, is equal to sa iyahang pag ubos po niya pabalik sa original. Okay, so equal lang ang time of rise and time of fall. So kung unsa ang time of rise, i-times 2 lang na to, mo to imong total air time. Okay? So mo nang gipanguta na nga, how long does the ball remain in the air? So ang gipanguta na ana is ang imuhang air time. And since same ra man ang rise and fall nimo, so 2 ta two times time ra gyud siya. Okay? So let's try to find time, no? Padulong ana nga padulong atong na compute na to, no? At that moment. So we have VF is equal to VI minus GT. And then if we try to manipulate the equation to find time, we have T is equal to VF minus VI all over uh, negative G. Okay? So input lang na to, 0 minus 22.5 all over negative 9.8. And so we have we will get 2.3 seconds. And then, muna siya ang time, ang 2.3 seconds, muna yung time nga mag-rise. And then, so equal man sila sa time nga mag-fall, so that is also 2.3. So i-calculate na nato, i-times 2 lang nato ang 2.3, and that is, all, that is our total time in the air. So total time in the air is 4.6 seconds. Okay, so gets ba? Okay, so uh, recap lang. We are given G, V, I, and V, F. Atong V, F is zero. Kay at peak altitude, zero ang ato ang final velocity. So letter A, sa pag-find sa ato ang Y max, is gigamit ato ang D. Kina atay V, I, V, F, natay V, I, and natay G. And for letter B, pangitan ato, gamit ato ang letter B, kina atay V, F, na nabuntay V, I, and natay G. So mapangitan ato ang time. And then, pagpangitan na ito sa time, g times 2 na ito siya. Kaya ang gipanguta na remain in the air man. So, total air time. And total air time is equal to time of rise plus time of fall. And time of rise plus time of fall. And time of fall is equal lang. So, pwede rin siya nga isa ra. So, that's times 2. No? So, 2.3 times 2 is 4.6 seconds. Okay? So, remember, ito ang atong total time in the air is equal to time rise plus time fall. Okay. So next, so you throw a bean bag in the air and catch it 2.2 seconds later at the same place at which you threw it. So how high did it go? Okay. And letter B is what 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 was its initial velocity? So we are given with G 9.8 meters per second and our Time in the air is 2.2 seconds, no? Okay, imo daw siyang gilabay and after pa lang 2.2 seconds, I heard mo siya na-catch balik. So, time rise, time air, muna tayo imuhang total nga 2.2 seconds. So, ang time rise na to is 1.1 seconds and time full na to is 1.1 seconds as well. And our VF is 0 meters per second. Can you ni reach siya sa ayahang peak, no? So let's try to find first our letter B, nga initial velocity. Okay. So we are given uh, VF, na putay G, and na atay time. And our time is 1.1 seconds again. Okay. So, pangyata na to ang initial velocity, uh, atong unsa nga speed ang imong gipaglabay atong binbag pataas. And then we try to isolate VI. We get VI is equal to VF plus GT. So, i-substitute na to VF is 0 and RG is 9.8 and our time is 1.1. So, ato na siyang i-calculate sa itong calculator, we will get an initial velocity of 
78 meters per second. Okay, so if we try now to find our y max, we can use letter C, our equation letter C, which is delta y is equal to vit minus one half gt squared. So morning purpose, nga nang ipangita sa nato daan ang initial velocity, kay magamit na dahil na nato siya sa pag-find sa ito ang y max. Okay ba? At kung tanaw na to sa four equations na to, given kailangan yun ang initial velocity sa pagpangita sa delta y. Okay, kung well, dali na to papangita ang initial velocity, di na to mapangita ang delta y. So mo to siya important ka, giuna na to ang pagpangita sa initial velocity. This one sa letter B pagit siya nga, di kinihang lang. Okay, so ito is substitute ang atong values. After our VI is 10.78. Our time is 1.1 seconds. The minus one half 9.8 times 1.1 seconds again, and our delta y is 5.9 meters. Okay, so same process lang sa atong gibuat sa atong all problems ng atong nasol. And our last problem for free fall. So you throw a ball downward from a window at a speed of two meters per second. So how fast would it be? Will it be moving when it hits the sidewalk 2.5 meters below? So we're given g is equal to 9.8 meters per second squared. Our delta y is negative 2.5 meters, and our initial velocity is 2 meters per second. So na tay v i na tay delta y and na tay g and gipangita nato ang v f. So unsa nga equation nato magamit dre? And makita na to ang perfect equation nga to magamit is letter D, which is Vf squared is equal to Vi squared minus 2G delta Y. And so to calculate our Vf, we take the root, no? And matake na to ang root sa right side, and that is the square root of Vi squared minus 2G delta Y. And then we substitute the values. Our Vi is 2 meters per second, then is square. Minus 2G is 9.8 meters per second squared. And then our delta Y is negative 2.5 meters. Again, negative siya. Okay. You throw na to downward. So meaning at lower elevation siya at the end of the problem. So we try to calculate this sa calculator. Atong makuha is VF is equal to 7.3 meters per second downward. Okay. So that is the end of our lecture for today. So again lang for recap, sa atong pag-solve gani og problems, una na to button is identify the given, then identify the required uh, value, and then tanaw na to sa equations na to, sa atong kinematic equation, either horizontal or uh, free fall, kung unsa ang pinaka-fit nga atong gamitin. So, nai chances nga, daghan nga equations sa atong magamit. So, na na sa ito ang discretion na lang na ito sa itong sarili kung unsa itong gamitin. Masa yun ba? Or gusto sa gusto ta ma-challenge sa itong pag-solve? Okay? So, nakadepende na na sa ito. Ah. So, advice. So, continue lang practice solving problems lang, no? About aning uh, sa itong lectures today. And after day aning itong lecture, nag-prepare uh, po itong summary test. So, na siya concepts and na siya problem solving. And sa deadline ani is on Wednesday, 5 p.m. Okay, so kung naamap mo uh, other queries or concerns or uh, clarifications, pwede nyo nyo i-comment, mag-comment mo dito sa post sa Google Classroom or sa dito sa ato ang uh, uh, Facebook page. Kaya nag-post po ko dito. So that would be all, freshmen. Salamat kayo sa inyong participation. And see you on our next lecture. Thank you.